Welcome everyone. I'm Dr. John White, the Chief Medical Officer of WebMD, and you're watching your health on tech. We know that our fitness level is related to our overall health. It impacts our risk for heart disease, diabetes, even cancer. It also affects our mood and how we function during the day. But how do we measure such things as cardiovascular fitness? How do we know if a loved one's at risk for a fall or has significant frailty? This would be useful information. And our current smartwatches and trackers only give us so much information. Is there another way to get this personalized data that's actionable? My guests today say they have the answer. Joining me in studio, Dr. Dan Giordano. He's the Chief Medical Officer at Bespoke Treatments. And Dr. Cameron Yuan. He's the Director of Physical Therapy at Bespoke. Gentlemen, thanks for joining me. Thank you for having us. It's nice to see you again. I had the opportunity to visit with you yesterday. We did an assessment of my overall fitness level. So can you explain to our audience what we did yesterday? Of course. So what we did with you was our VO2 max test. That's what we broadly call it. The unit we use in particular is called the Pinoy Breath Analysis. And what we do with that is we take a technology that was previously reserved only for laboratory settings in the sports performance field, and we actually bring it into the clinic so we can help the general population, everyone who wants to get a little bit fitter, whether that's recovering from an injury, they want to improve their health, or they want to improve their fitness. And so with this test, we take you through a three-stage ramp protocol. That includes a warm-up, the test itself, where we take you to your maximum heart rate, and that's where we capture your VO2 max. Along the way, we also capture a lot of actionable information that sets your baseline. So we capture all of your training zones. We capture how well your cardiovascular system is working, how well your respiratory system is working, as well as your metabolic system. So this lets our clients know exactly where they stand in an objective sense, and we can see where they need to go according to their goals. From a broader population level, we see chronic conditions are on the rise constantly. And a lot of these can be identified much earlier and actioned on much earlier when we have that baseline information. Well, what data does it give us that, say, my smartwatch doesn't give me? So here I'm you know, walking on this treadmill, I'm wearing this mask and, and breathing through it. What's that data that it's giving me? And, and we did an analysis of my data. So what does it tell us? What, what can a person do? with this information? We break it down broadly into those three systems, our cardiovascular, our respiratory, our metabolic. And then within that, we can actually use your smartwatch to start tailoring your training. So I can see exactly at what heart rate does your body start preferring different fuels? At what heart rate does your breathing coordination fall out of place? So I can see exactly what heart rates you should be training at to get specific adaptations. Great thing with a lot of smartwatches these days that are broadly available, a lot of them actually track your zones now. So with this, we actually get your zones, not from a math equation, but from your own physiology. And so we can then take that data and then plug it into your smartwatch that's a lot more easily used for, for the everyday individual. So it's telling me whether I'm burning carbs or fat, which my watch can't do, and that right. can help in terms of the management of diabetes, pre-diabetes, but it's also giving me an overall assessment of my cardiovascular and pulmonary, my heart and lung health, isn't it? Yes. I also want to talk about this fancy suit, Dan. Tell us about this suit and what type of data it gives you as someone who's trying to help someone improve their overall wellness. So it gives us an objective way to measure body fat and body mass, and then also circumferences of certain limbs on your body. So there's sensors on the suit that connect with your phone. It takes you through a series of movements to then measure your body, and then it's going to give us those results. And it's a really great way to get baseline data. So if someone comes in and they say, oh, my goals are X, okay, let's get an objective measurement to see where you're at now. So it can hold us accountable and also can allow us to set goals. So if you're looking to, let's say you measure at 20% body fat, and you say, oh, I want to get between 15 to 17 cosmetically or performance, whatever you need that for, then we have a baseline data to know exactly how we're doing. It also will measure circumferences of certain limbs so we know, okay, well, uh, my hips are, you know, 34 inches and my chest is 40. I want to have my chest bigger and my hips, you know, smaller. So then it will give us that data to know, okay, so at one month, here we are at 
three months we're here, at six months here, and we can readjust our goals or adjust our program to try to correlate to what we need to get to get to that data that is the goal. Something we talk often about as we get older are the challenges of falls. We know it's a significant cause of morbidity and mortality, even if you don't die from the fall, from the complications later. We know that frailty is an issue that is a big concern for elderly parents. You know, are they able to manage at home? But you have some testing that really was designed in the physical therapy space with injury to look into this issue of grip strength and force. So, so talk to us, Dan, about what that type of data can do. So Epispoke, what we do is we use force analysis. So what we're trying to get is objective measurements uh, to gather data. So we have baseline data, like we said. Uh, with the grip strength, it's a great way to measure where you are side to side. And what are we doing in that? We're just So we're using a device, a vol device, and what it does is just measure the squeeze that you have to how much newtons you produce in force for a grip strength, and then we'll check them side to side. Okay, so one of the best things that we can do with the grip strength, that should be done for everyone. Whether you come in with a shoulder injury, a neck injury, a lower body injury, Grip strength, as we know, can be correlate to falls as we get older. So we want to make sure that the asymmetry between those is as minimal as possible. These differences in what we see in side to side. Symmetry. Exactly. Yeah. So with grip strength, if you have more than 20 to 30 percent asymmetry, you can increase your risk of falls up to 1.5 percent or so. So we want to make sure that if there is an asymmetry, then we know what to use the program to do to strengthen that area or to strengthen the entire chain to know that if someone has asymmetry, how do we change that gap and make it less asymmetrical or bring it more symmetrical so that there's less of a risk of fall as they get older? With force analysis, what me and Cameron do is we go through the entire body, right? So if we have a patient that comes in, we get our objective baseline data and we'll measure the force, whether it's upper body, lower body, or full body. We also can use force plates to measure side to side. And that also has been shown if there's more of an asymmetry side to side, it could create more fall risk as you age. So we want to try to get as symmetrical as possible so that even our gait speed stays normal, right? How we walk. How we walk. Longer walk. Exactly. So if there's more asymmetry side to side and lower extremity muscles, your gait speed will also slow as you age. So we want to make sure that everyone is being as symmetrical as possible so that we can age more gracefully without our risk for falls or to decrease our risk for falls. I'm always fascinated by kinesiology, how our bodies move. We're not always aware of that, a concept of proprioception where we're aware of how our limbs are, but you also have a tool where you use video and then AI to help people understand how their limbs move. Can you talk a little bit about that, Cameron? Yeah, so another piece of equipment you saw us demonstrate was actually using uh, LIDAR. So it actually is using light, it reflects off of the walls of our space and it can actually capture all of our joint movements as we go through more functional movements. So we do wanna see how strong joints are individually, how strong muscles are individually, and how, how well those joints move individually, because those components obviously make up the, the bigger movement as a whole, but we also want to see how well you put that together. So the most functional things we do in life, getting up and down from a chair, even falling, getting up and down from the ground, we want to make sure that all of the joints have the ability to move through their range of motion to accomplish these tasks. So what do we do in this video? So in this one, Dan took us through two samples and he looked at my shoulder flexion as well as my deep squat. So how well my entire lower body can compress down as well as expand back up. So it looks at how well my spine can move, my shoulders can move from my hips all the way down to my feet. And just with a click of a button, Dan can capture how all of those joints are moving at once. So it's a really excellent tool to use because we can pick up where those limitations are and exactly what we need to work on. So we're not just mm -hmm. guessing in the dark there. Now you're both doctors of physical therapy. Does that change your perception of wellness and fitness than perhaps a personal trainer or a physician that's trained in family medicine? Yeah, so I can say, um, you know, a personal trainer, they're, they're really focused on the, the fitness aspect of an individual. Um, and doctor is generally going to see someone on the illness side of that continuum. And the great thing about our practice and where we sit within that is we kind of see both. We see people right in the middle. We see people who are recovering from illness and are working their way towards fitness. And so these tools, they really help, they really help us identify 
exactly where those limitations might be from a cardiovascular sense, from a strength sense, or from a movement quality sense that might be pushing them towards that illness side of the continuum. And we can pull them back and get them more towards fitness, help their trainer actually work on those performance aspects. So we can work in tandem with doctors as well as trainers to make sure that our clients are, are well taken care of. But I would argue these tools can have more widespread use. So we can talk about grip strength and force in terms of seniors in knowing can they independently live at home? Are there things that we need to be doing? In terms of cardiovascular fitness, not just in terms of training, but as an additional risk factor in terms of uh, for heart disease and diabetes that we can objectively quantify. But I'll be honest, I wasn't aware of many of these tools until you and I started chatting. So how do we make people more aware and have access to these different types of tools, not just as it relates to fitness, but as to an overall wellness strategy and you know decreasing morbidity and mortality? I think that in the medical field, we need to make sure that we are staying advanced and on par with technology, right? So we need to make sure that hopefully these types of tools mm -hmm. become adapted by most physical therapy clinics or primary care doctors around the country. And if we can start to assess people using objective data as opposed to subjective or bringing them together and having objective and subjective, then we can really try to assess the individual and make healthcare more proactive as opposed to reactive, mm -hmm. right? So we don't want to react on injuries. We want to make sure that we can see trends and see how people change and they see how people improve over time so that if we can get this data and baseline data, then we can predict things and start to make changes in lifestyle, changes in programs to help those individuals age better as they go through their process of life. We need to have them more in health systems. We need to have them in doctor's offices, physical medicine, rehab places as well. So, so Cameron, where can people learn more about what you and Dan are doing? So they can learn more at bespoketreatments.com. That's our website. That's the name of our practice. On there, we have a lot of information relating to the testing, but also the actionable insights that you get from that testing. Gentlemen, I want to thank you for joining me today. Thank you. Thank you for having us. Thanks, Sean.